So you're colder than you want to be, but you've got a great sleeping bag that's supposed to keep you warm. What you neglected was an insulated sleeping pad. That's like me walking around right now in 20 degrees without boots on. I may have the best down coat on the market, I'm still gonna be cold. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how they get that rating for a sleeping bag. Then I'm gonna talk about what you actually need to do to achieve that comfort rating in your sleep system. I wanna break down some of the technical side of what an insulated sleeping pad actually does for you. It's a little too cold up here right now, so I'm gonna jump back in the studio and we'll finish out this video. So you're colder than you wanna be, but you've got a great sleeping bag. Obviously, your sleeping bag is only a part of your sleep system. The next most important part, and it's no secret, is gonna be your sleeping pad. When you think about it, almost half of your body is exposed when you sleep without an insulated sleeping pad. That's because your body is compressing the down on the bottom of your sleeping bag, rendering it useless in terms of insulation. Now you also compress the sleeping pad, which brings your pressure points, such as your butt and your shoulders, closer to the ground than the rest of your body. So in reality, you're probably only an inch or so off that cold, cold ground that's gonna suck heat right out of you. So bear with me for a bit while I cover some of the basics of insulating properties and how all of that works and applies to a sleeping pad. So it's the air around your body that keeps you warm at night. A down sleeping bag works because that down restricts air movement and keeps those pockets of air that your body has warmed up right close to your body. This is the basic principle for most types of insulation. Even your mid-layer does this. It keeps warm pockets of air close to your body and keeps that heat from moving around and escaping. Now, air is not a great conductor, meaning if it's still, it won't move heat through it very well, especially compared to something like a metal rod that is a good conductor and heat will move through it quickly. But air will transfer a lot of heat by convection. When air is allowed to move within something like a sleeping pad, the molecules will circulate and cool on the ground side of the pad, then move to the heated side of the pad, and so on. Something like your insulated Yeti mug has a vacuum between the two walls, meaning there are no molecules to move around and transfer heat. This is the ideal type of insulation, but obviously you can't do this in a sleeping pad. Down or synthetic insulation is used to reduce movement of molecules and therefore the transfer of heat between you and the ground. As you use energy to heat the air within your sleeping pad, those air pockets stay close to your skin and transfer less heat to the ground, requiring less energy to keep warm. Something to note is that a sleeping pad requires less loft than your sleeping bag because warm air rises, meaning the warm air in your pad wants to stay up, close to your body. The warm air in your sleeping bag wants to move up as well and away from your body. All of this is pretty dense and I am by no means claiming to be an expert. If I did say anything wrong, please, Leave a comment. One thing you've definitely heard of is R value. This is just a way to measure how much heat gets through your sleeping pad. They actually use the same scale that they do on other insulators, such as home insulation. On a sleeping pad, they measure it using two steel plates, one of them with a sensor, and it measures how much heat is lost through the sleeping pad. Sleeping pads seldom have R values higher than 10, and the scale is linear, so keep that in mind. So what R value sleeping pad should you buy? Before we talk about that, we need to talk about sleeping bag comfort ratings. And it's a couple things that you should probably know before you go into purchasing a sleeping pad or a sleeping bag. In 2005, the EN13537 standard was introduced to give all sleeping bags a standardized test to get a temperature rating on them. If your sleeping bag has the newer ISO 23537 rating, it's gonna mean about the same thing. So what does the process of this test actually look like? It's quite complex, but in short, they've got a heated mannequin that they place inside of a sleeping bag and they measure how much energy it takes to keep that guy warm. Now what may surprise you is this mannequin is actually dressed in a beanie or a face mask, a long sleeve top, long sleeve bottoms, and knee high socks. He's also sleeping on a foam sleeping mat that has an R value of 4.8. There's a lot more to know about that test, but the key takeaway for this video is that if your sleeping pad is not an R4.8 or higher, you are not gonna wanna trust the temperature rating on your sleeping bag. Another thing to note is that mannequin is supposed to represent the average male, but he's calibrated for a 25 year old who's five foot eight, 154 pounds. If you're six foot one, 200 pounds, 
there's going to be a couple different variables. One of them will be you might compress the sleeping pad a little more. Another one will be you have more body mass, so you're going to hold more heat. If you're a female or a cold sleeper, you're going to want to look at adding, say, 10, 15 degrees to that sleeping bag's rating just because that rating isn't going to be an accurate representation of how you sleep. Okay, I've gone on enough about the technical side of things. Let's talk about what R-value sleeping pad you should actually buy. If you did some research online, you've probably seen a couple different charts, such as REI has one that breaks down the sleeping pad R-value by temperature. The issue with that is not all of us can afford to buy three or four different sleeping pads. So which one should you purchase? Personally, I've been running the XPED winter mat. It's got an R-value of 7.1 and I use it on almost all hunts after September. If the low that night is 50 degrees, I'm comfortable, I'm plenty cozy. If the low is 10 degrees like it was the other night, sleeping directly on top of snow, this pad has been adequate as well. I also own a climate non-insulated pad. It's lighter, it's cheaper, it's more packable, but honestly, I only use that once or twice a year. So because of that, you should know when you're camping, if you're only summertime, you can get away with a non-insulated pad. I would strongly recommend though, if you are looking to purchase a new pad, get something with an R value of five or above. You really will not regret it. Obviously the downside of that is size, weight, and cost. And here I have three different XPED models. This orange one is an R value of 3.3. This one is the R value 7.1. This is the same mat that I have here. These are both size medium. This one is the same as this mat, only a larger size, but you can see how much more volume it actually takes up and it weighs quite a bit more as well. That being said, from my personal experience, I've been using this mat on a couple different hunts and I'm probably going to move up to the bigger one. It weighs more, it's larger, it's gonna be more to pack, but it's worth it. Now this pad in particular, as I said, has a R value of 7.1 and it's actually filled with down. So we'll deflate it here just so you can see just how much loft you're getting with an insulated sleeping pad. So that's totally deflated and you can see there's a lot of loft in here. There's actual down feathers in there keeping you warm. This is super worth it, especially if your temps are gonna be below 32 at night. Having a serious winter pad is going to make your life so much nicer. It's also gonna give you insurance. If your sleeping bag gets a little wet, having an overly warm pad will help you there. Now, as I said before, your sleeping pad and your sleeping bag are only part of the equation. Having a warm tent, having proper hydration and fuel before you go to sleep, and just your personal body type is gonna make a big difference in how warm you sleep at night. So, you should never underestimate the importance of a proper sleep system and routine. If this video is helpful to you, give it a like, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions about gear, give us a call. You can find our info at gearful.com. Thanks for watching.